Today, I'm gonna to show you how to take 360 photos with any camera. There are essentially three things you'll need to do this. One, a camera with a wide lens. An iPhone lens is wide enough. Two, a laptop. You can use a tripod with a panoramic head as well, but this is not essential. For this purpose, I'm gonna show you how to achieve it with a DSLR and a panoramic head. Although later in the video, I'll show you that this is not necessary. So let's get the camera mounted to the tripod head. You're gonna to have to mount it portrait mode to make the most of the available space. So now that the camera is mounted onto the tripod head, we need to get the pupil entrance in line with the tripod. The easiest way to do this is to line up the front of the lens with the center of the tripod. Most panoramic heads will have these little knobs to make fine adjustments. So you'll know when this is set up perfectly because the body of the camera will rotate around the front of the lens. So now the camera is set up, we can go ahead and start taking our photos. And this is where George lost his voice, so I'll be taking over from here on. First, get the camera set up. Use manual mode, shooting high quality JPEG with a shutter speed of at least 1 50th. The higher the aperture, the better. Start with the floor or ceiling, but make sure you don't get the tripod in frame. Most panoramic heads will have tactile clicks to indicate how much you should turn the tripod head before taking the next picture. This is great because it means you are less likely to miss any of the surroundings. Finally, turn on your autofocus. When taking the photos, make sure that you take at least three different angles doing a full 360. If you're not using a tripod or panoramic head, simply align the front element with your foot and pivot around that point. Once you are done, offload the photos and download this program. We're only using the trial version as it's a paid program, but for £100 it's way cheaper than buying a 360 camera and it will give you larger, higher quality 360 images. Next, load your images into the program and make sure they are all portrait. You can enter information about the lens and camera you are using if the EXIF data is not available, but most cameras will automatically include this. If so, just click automatic. Click align images. This will begin stitching your photos together. Once done, you may need to do some fine tuning of control points but this is rare and easy to do. Using the panorama mode, you can easily spot the images that are misaligned. Using the control tab, add in the control points that are missing. For me, this was image 62 and 63. To add the control points, click a point on the image, then simply match up that point on the other image. You'll need to add a minimum of three control points. I've sped up the rest of the control point added. When you are done, check the panorama viewer. If there are still misaligned images, right click and exclude them. Use the eye tool to view a draft 360 view. This will give you an idea of the finished 360 image. Once you are happy, head back to the project assistant and click optimize. This will fine tune the stitching and control points. Next, hit create panorama. You will need to enter your required dimensions. I'm going to upload to Facebook, so I will need a width of 6,000 pixels. Now click create panorama and head over to theexifer.net. Upload your newly created panorama and click exif me. This is where you can edit the EXIF or metadata of your panorama. 
This will ensure that your 360 platform recognizes it as a 360 image. These settings here will work for almost any platform. Click Go Exa Thing once done. Close the editor and download your image. Now back to George. So there we are then. That's how you take 360 photos with any camera. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up and let us know if it helped you down in the comments below. And whilst you're in the comments section, why don't you hit that subscribe button? I'll see you next week.